Hello students, welcome to lecture 27 of the online course on photonic crystals, fundamentals and applications. Today's lecture will be on band gap guidance in holy fiber. So here is the lecture outline, we will first discuss about the mystery about the light guidance in holy fibers and then we will discuss about the origin of band gap in holy fibers, we will take examples of metal cylinders and then you know compare to that with air hole arrays okay and um, we will also then discuss the guided modes in a hollow core we will discuss about the uh, surface states and go into the details of the mode profiles so index guiding that we know that it can be relied upon you know how to confine light within uh, the regions of higher index okay that is how uh, index guiding takes place. So, index guiding um, is typically done based on the principle of uh, modified total internal reflection, right. So, in contrast to that, when you have uh, a photonic band gap as a principle for light guiding, there you have to think of, you know, that this band gap can localize light in a waveguide which has a lower index such as a hollow core. So, it is a very different concept altogether than the traditional uh, concepts used for light guiding in optical fibers or even you know index guiding fibers. So, here is an example or figure you can say for the two dimensional periodic structure which is in the form of a triangular lattice of air holes. So, this is called a holy fiber and this is A which is the period of the holes. Okay. So, this can be used for confining light into this hollow core uh, using the principle of band gap. So, of course, a fiber cannot have a complete band gap because of its uh, continuous translational symmetry in the z dimension. So, you can think this is x and y and you can think of z going into the plane of the screen. Okay. So, the fibers are continuously you know they, they are infinitely long you can think of that. So, you actually have continuous translational symmetry along the z direction ok and you know so a complete band gap may not be possible for this kind of structure. But because of this uh, translational symmetry the wave vector k z is conserved and it is therefore still useful to have a band gap over some finite range of kz okay so that way this this uh, photonic crystal fibers with two dimensional uh, periodic structures are really useful but how might such a gap arise in case of a silica holy fiber as compared um, such as those we have seen in the previous sections okay or previous lectures and um, how can we use it to confine light in air? So, these are a couple of interesting questions or mysteries that is there in the case of holy fibers where you are using a uh, air hole as your core to guide light. So, to understand that let us look into the origin of the band gap in holy fibers. So, let us begin by considering the periodic cladding by itself without any core. Okay, so, you do not have a core, you just consider completely you know filled uh, periodic cladding. You can also think of a uniform air hole at the center to just you know think of the cladding. Okay. So, at any value kz, okay, the solutions are usual block modes comprising a band structure in a two dimensional brilliant zone. Now, what is important here? We need to find the range of kz for which the band, band structure gives us, you know, a band gap. That is a gap between the two bands, isn't it? Okay. And uh, the previously discussed uh, two-dimensional gaps of any use here that we have done for two-dimensional slabs. The answer is unfortunately no, because in the earlier uh, cases of these two-dimensional gaps, they all correspond to kz equals 0, but this is an infinitely long structure. Okay? So, you cannot actually have kz equals 0, rather 
you need to find gaps that exist for a range of uh, non-zero kz and then only it will be useful for um, this kind of web guide okay so if the crystal has a complete band gap that is you know overlapping t and tm gaps at kz equals 0 then indeed there will be a range of values of kz equals 0 over which you know the gap will persist but you know uh, the silica air dielectric contrast which is typically um, 2 is to 2.1 is to 1 okay it's typically not sufficient to obtain uh, such a complete two dimensional band gap okay at least not for this kind of simple uh, periodic geometries so if you take this and uh, this as an example okay here you have you know silica air structure and uh, this can have a t gap but not an overlapping tm gap okay for um, kz not equals 0 okay case you will see that you know the gap basically disappear because the te gap and tm gap do not overlap with different materials a complete band gap is possible at kz equals 0 something like you know uh, something like uh, chalcogenide glasses which have uh, indices of 2.7 or higher so you instead of silica you got to use this kind of uh, glasses for which um, complete band gap can be possible for this kind of you know um, like glass air kind of structure so what other alternative do we have to find a gap in a holy fiber okay so since um, kz equals 0 was not useful in this case um, let us consider the other extreme that is you know kz tends to infinity okay and uh, in this limit the system is again equivalent to a two dimensional system okay so here uh, the holes will now get replaced by perfect metal rods and only an analog of the tm polarization will be present in this case right so this is a band diagram over a brilliant zone or irreducible brilliant zone for a triangular array of uh, metallic cylinders positioned like this this is the normalized frequency and this is the vectorial band diagram because it shows different direction okay and um, you can see that the band gaps are basically shaded in yellow so the lowest band here has a low frequency cutoff okay like this which is characteristic of the metallic structures and there is another band as well between the second and the third band so there is another band gap here okay and these bands are equivalent to the modes of the holy fiber in the scalar limit for large kz okay so that is why we are taking this particular structure to understand okay so as you can see here that the structure indeed have a gap between two bands so the metallic rod here has a radius r equals 0.3 a okay and uh, that has given us this gap between uh, the second and the third band and this is basically a cutoff frequency concept which comes from the metal right now this band gap that you have seen between the second and the third band okay will appear not only for um, silica air structure but you can also um, get this uh, appear make this appear for any index contrast with the uh, same geometry as long as uh, you go to a large enough kz value so in this case the first two uh, bands in the scalar limit would correspond to four vectorial modes which we'll see later okay and uh, so we can expect to see a gap open between the fourth and the fifth bands as well okay which are not shown here but then this will be if if each of these are having two modes okay in that case there will be fourth and here it will be fifth so you'll actually see a gap between the fourth and the fifth uh, bands 
for sufficiently large kz values okay we'll come to that okay so let us look into the origin of band gaps for air hole structures now so when guiding in an air core it is important that the gap open up when uh, kz is not too large in order for that gap to extend above the you know light line of air that is given by omega equal ck okay or you can write omega equal ckz so therefore um, we increase the strength of the gap by enlarging the holes to r equals uh, 0.47a so what it was previously it was uh, like this okay so increased it and then this is what we get okay the resulting projected band diagram is shown here in this particular figure right where we plot all the modes of the periodic cladding so this is the cladding without any core okay and this is plotted the normalized frequency is plotted as a function of the normalized wave vector kz so here you can see we plot from 0 to 3 here also it goes from 0 to 3 okay and um, in this case the period is a and the whole diameter or radius sorry the whole radius is uh, 0 0.47 a okay and the material is taken as uh, 2.1 uh, okay so here you can see that uh, this forms the light cone of the crystal okay so it, you can also call it photonic crystal light cone and uh, the lower boundary is marked by this particular uh, red line as it is done also for the uniform medium but there is something interesting here um, something like this you know uh, there are some dashed uh, regions highlighted which show some opening okay above the lowermost uh, boundary so you see there is a white uh, region above this particular line so there is a photonic band gap here above the light line okay so you can actually um, see this uh, better in this particular um, diagram okay so what is happening here this is the vectorial band diagram for the same case where the radius of the air holes taken as 0.47 a and this is the holy fiber and what we are doing here this is plotted for a particular value of kz so here you can see that at kz a by 2 pi equals uh, 1.7 this is the case okay you actually have this opening so you plot this particular vectorial diagram at this particular value of kz okay so what do you see here you actually see band gap so the band gaps are um, shaded in yellow so once again the lower gap is basically coming from the index guided, guided region okay so for this kind of structure also you have uh, a uh, lower gap so once again it comes from the index guiding region okay and uh, the upper gap this one corresponds to one of the band gap inside the light cone where guiding in air core is possible and this is because of this phenomena okay so it is a band gap inside the light cone right and that is why you know uh, guiding of light in this air core will be possible so uh, this gap um, since this gap comes from the scalar limit it remains open and indeed it increases monotonically as uh, kz is increased so here you can see that particular feature that this gap actually increases monotonically with kz so this is basically uh, the band diagram for or you can say this is the omega k relationship or dispersion relationship for the triangular uh, lattice of air holes and uh, this is particularly the vectorial um, band diagram at a particular value of k and this is mainly showing you the different directions fine so what we understand from here is that you know this forms 
of the light cone of the holy fiber with gaps appearing inside that as uh, these open regions and uh, for larger KZ you can see that higher order gaps are also appearing in the scalar limit. So, what is this red line? This red line basically shows you the light line of air and that is marked as omega equals ckz and uh, this dashed boxes basically indicate those defect modes which we are trying to excite for light propagation inside the holy core fiber. So, there are two interesting gap properties that can be understood from the scalar limit. The first is that true dimensional band gaps open only for some minimum index contrast which is uh, around 1.4 h to 1 for this kind of assembly like you know triangular lattice of circular holes and that is not true for the fibers because fibers have uh, uh, slightly different requirement as we discussed earlier and the band structure approaches a scalar limit of the metallic uh, rods with same gaps and um, for any index contrast and no matter how small okay although a small index contrast for a small index contrast a gap may open for very large kz value which is far below the air light line okay so so this is basically the situation that you can expect at very large kz values right that is why we are like referring to this um, case um, one limit case all the time okay and the second important point so there are two important gap properties as i mentioned first one is shown here the second one is this that consider what happens for the inverse case of higher index rods which are you know surrounded by lower index material so for that case you know in the um, scalar limit one obtains uh, you know the light modes will be 100 percent confined inside the rods itself yielding the bands which are independent of the in plane block wave vector that is kx and ky okay and the bandwidth of the lowest photonic bands become very narrow in that case approaching a discrete set of bands um, corresponding to the scalar uh, modes of cylindrical metal cavities okay so that will be like you know inverse of this particular structure where you have cylindrical metal cavities okay in um, between these uh, bands are the gaps but here the gaps will be largely insensitive to the position of the rods since in the you know scalar limit the rods will form non interacting cavities um, whose frequencies are basically determined by the rod geometry alone right so the band gap guidance has been observed experimentally to be very low like you know for the index contrast as low as one percent in such cases okay and uh, the localization of modes via this sort of phenomena has been dubbed as anti-resonant reflecting optical wave guiding okay so these are two important phenomena that can happen in um, the fibers okay holy fibers and we will see how the guided modes look like now in a holo core so by now we are familiar with the fact that you know uh, given a band gap if you are able to uh, introduce a defect in the crystal you can produce localized states okay and this phenomena is basically exploited to guide light inside a hollow core photonic crystal fiber. So, this particular figure shows the cross section of an experimental holy silica fiber. So, you can see it is a uh, whole array okay, that is in the cladding and at the center um, seven holes are basically merged to form a large cap. Okay. So, this is how uh, experimentally this fiber has been made okay. and this is the image from an electron microscope and the, the black region here shows you the air holes and this is basically silica glass okay. and uh, this is a zoomed in version for you guys to clearly see it and you can see that you know the, this black 
portions are basically air holes okay and this this core basically works like a central air defect because it is replacing seven holes okay and it can support gap guided modes at a wavelength of 1060 nanometer okay so that is particular to this this dimension if you change the dimension you will have a different band gap and you'll be able to guide the wavelength of your choice okay so when you try to um, replicate this in simulation okay what you can do you can consider um, a single hole uh, whose radius is basically enlarged from say 0.7 a to 1.202 a and you will get something like that okay so if you if you do that so what is what here um, a is 30 3.2 microns okay and um, if you do 1.202 a you will be able to get radius almost equal to this one so that is how you can actually uh, simulate this particular uh, structure in this fashion and why we are showing this because our focus will be to have something you know within this gap okay that was shown in the in this particular figure so we want our modes to be somewhere here okay and when you do the actual uh, simulation with this then this is the structure that you are actually simulating so what you have done we have taken the central hole and uh, set its uh, radius to 1.202 a and you came up with uh, this kind of structure right and then when you computed the band diagram so this is how the band diagram looks like and you can see that there are some kind of you know uh, interesting features over here so why i have shown this on this side here you can see that this is the experimental uh, structure and um, we are basically trying to see what happens here so this is kind of a zoomed version okay so as you can see here it starts from 0 to 3 the normal edge frequency whereas you are here only showing from 1.4 to 2 and you are also doing it for 1.3 to 2 that means you are somewhere here 1.3 to 2 so more or less you are basically doing this box okay so you have zoomed into and studied this box for this particular geometry and this is what we observe right now here we can categorize these modes uh, the guided modes that you see okay in uh, two ways by symmetry and by whether they are surface states or they are air core modes okay so there are two ways of categorizing them and uh, the lines in different colors correspond to different symmetries as you can see here there are you know different color lines we'll go into the details so the three um, thick red lines here um, indicate doubly degenerate bands that have the correct symmetry to couple to plane wave input light okay and there are also some thin green lines which indicate uh, doubly degenerate bands with different symmetry and the thin blue lines indicate non degenerate bands okay and the bands below this uh, light line that is the thick black line here okay are basically the surface states okay uh, so they will be basically confined to the edge of the core okay we'll see that uh, here through some uh, simulation okay so we'll now focus on this uh, three dots that we see they basically indicate uh, modes okay and uh, for this particular photonic crystal holy fiber so this particular black line is the light line in air so that is omega equals ckz okay so when you do simulations and uh, you first focus on this particular one so what we are plotting here is basically the intensity pattern okay that is uh, real of E conjugate cross H that is basically giving you the pointing vector 
okay and the direction so you actually get the you know intensity of this uh, three doubly degenerate modes of this particular hollow core fiber right so these are basically corresponding these three figures correspond to these three dots that you see okay and uh, the normalized frequencies are marked here so you see the first one it is omega a by 2 pi c equals 1.63 so this is this one the below one okay okay and the one on the top is omega a by 2 pi c equals 1.66 and the one here has got the highest frequency that is 1.68 okay so they have also shown this so this these two are for the same kz value where the normalized kz or you can say kz a by 2 pi is 1.6 and for this case it is 1.7 okay so the dark one means zero intensity and the bright ones or white ones means the maximum intensity so what do you see from this kind of plot okay so you can actually see that this a and b points are lying above the air line okay so they can give rise to some air core modes okay but however this one this particular dot this is lying below the uh, light line okay so this will give you a surface state and that you can also see from here right and that is what you know the intensity patterns also reveals a very important and striking difference between the two bands okay which lie above the light line and the one below the light line okay so this one is below the light line so here you can see the in this two case you know the intensity is mainly um, concentrated in the air core okay whereas you know in this particular case the intensity is mostly uh, concentrated around the surface of the air core okay that is an example of surface state so where they work they actually appear below the light line okay and uh, it is evanescent in the crystal because it is within the band gap okay and uh, it is also evanescent um, in air core because it lies below the light line if so if it was above the light line so it would have been you know a propagating mode or supported mode so you know um, if you look carefully we can figure out that there are four surface states of various symmetries below the light line so from this you can think of four different symmetric positions of the um, surface state and why so many so to understand this let us compare this case with the surface states of a two dimensional uh, crystal in uh, two dimensionals uh, in two dimensions we considered only uh, kz equals 0 and uh, then we found out a continuous band of surface states that propagated along a flat interface isn't it so here we have a curved infinite interface so instead of a continuous set of surface states we will have you know a discrete set of surface states here um, at each okay at each kz which will form continuous uh, bands as we vary this kz and this happens in uh, much the same way that a finite piano string supports only discrete set of harmonics so if we uh, if we were uh, to make the core larger and the interface longer then we would get more surface states okay which are more closely spaced makes sense okay however um, we must also take into account the crucial role of the crystal termination so here we considered complete you know 
expand uh, states sorry here we consider the crystal to be infinite along the x and y but in in practice that will also be terminated somewhere right so the existence of surface states depend on how we terminate the crystal for example uh, does the edge of the air core occurs at the edge of the holes or you know so it's like this or do we cut them in half okay how it is happening so this is like where you do not have a perfect uh, circular air core because you are basically having uh, the air holes complete and then you are curving this out isn't it so it should be possible to improve the performance of the fiber by adjusting the termination and that would eliminate you know the surface states so the surface states has got a lot to do the way it is being terminated and the surface modes degrade a uh, fibers performance primarily because uh, they may have greater loss than the guided modes so you can take for example you know the scattering due to surface roughness is much worse for a mode concentrated at the surface than you know for a mode that is concentrated in the core that is guided through air so surface roughness is not going to affect that air core mode right so one could attempt to operate exclusively in the air core mode of figure a that is this case okay but you know what we plan may not happen all the time so sometimes it proves very difficult in practice to only work at this particular uh, case okay so any small in imperfection in making this uh, photonic crystal fiber or any asymmetry will tend to couple energy from one mode to another mode okay and uh, especially at the points where the modes of different uh, symmetry uh, cross the cross in the band diagram so that is where the coupling of the energy between one mode to another will be higher and then you will not be only able to um, excite the air core that you see in figure uh, a okay so you will have to you know live with the surface uh, states as well so that is all for this lecture so we'll be starting the discussion of the overview of bragg fibers in the next lecture if you have any doubt regarding this concept okay or uh, you can drop an email to this uh, email address mentioning uh, MOOC photonic crystal and lecture 27 on the subject line thank you mm -hmm.